I've got a lot of questions lately about my setup, how I do my Go development, what tools I use, what fonts I use, what themes I use, all that stuff. And honestly, it's really simple. So I figured today I'd go ahead, show you all that stuff, give you a nice list. I have everything linked down below if you want to use it for yourself or take a look at it. Nothing too crazy. And uh, yeah, before I get into that, make sure you guys are subscribed. Got a ton of new stuff coming as per always. And uh, let's get into it. So to illustrate all of this, I just opened up the Tapir app uh, project I've been working on. And sort of when we get in here, I guess the best place to start is going to be with my terminal. The terminal I use is just the built-in VS code and I use ZSH for my shell. Uh, I like it. The autocomplete is super nice. If I do LS uh, dash or whatever, it'll give me all the possibilities I want. I can see all of that. Or if I do L and it'll show me everything here makes it super easy for me to work with all this stuff or uh, CA and it'll give me all the options really nice super convenient um, I used to use fish that was a shell that I used for a while but it doesn't have a lot of the support and a lot of the um, it doesn't use the native bash language at least I'm pretty sure it doesn't I didn't know as much back then but from what I remember I had a lot of issues with it so I switched over to ZSH it's been great so I use ZSH the theme I use on here is power level 10k I just went through and did a basic config on that I'll link an article on how I did that it's super easy and I highly recommend it it'll make your terminal look great and it makes it way more more pleasant to work with. I use JetBrains Mono for the font. Getting the font downloaded is a little weird, but it's pretty simple, all things considered. All you have to do is go in here to your, uh, that's not the button, go into your settings. So you need to search up terminal font and then you'll get terminal integrated font family and then just go ahead and type in whatever the name of your font is. Make sure that's in the font directory on your computer. If you're on a Mac, uh, that's pretty simple to do. All you need to do is just make sure that whatever font you're doing is within your font directory and to add these, you can just download the font and then and just drag and drop them into this open window. Those will all be added. And then you can see in here, I have JetBrains Mono, Nerd Font Mono, and you can see right here, Nerd Font Mono matches up and that's what I'm using down here. I use the same thing for my editor. So we just typed in font here. You can see I have JetBrains Mono makes it super. I think it looks really good. It's one of the best looking nerd fonts I've ever used and I need it for the icons because, you know, I like having a nice looking terminal. So that's all I use there. Getting into the editor itself. Obviously, I use VS Code. I know there's a lot of NeoVim people out there, but for me, it's just convenient. It's easy. Um, it's got really great support. I work. <clears throat> it's got really great support. I work on a bunch of different computers for work and stuff. So it's nice having all of my settings and preferences and keybinds synced to my sync to my GitHub profile. I know a lot of people don't like that. I ah, big company owns your stuff, but whatever. Um, I already have all of my code, all of my important stuff on GitHub. I don't care. They can have my key bindings. Um, and with that said, I use that, um, I also really like it just because it has really great built-in support for basically every language. Getting any of the modern popular languages up and running is trivial to do. Go included to do that with Go, it's super, super easy. If you, As long as you have Go installed correctly on your system, you have the GoPath uh, environment variable set, which is in the tutorial on Go's website on how to do that. You can just go in here and get the Go extension right here. And this extension will basically give you everything you could ever want for Go development within VS Code. You can go in here to main.go go if I wanted to it'll give you um, syntax highlighting give you auto formatting highlighting all that stuff like if I went here and I deleted this import it's going to throw errors because FMT is undeclared if I hit save it'll automatically import that for me so it just comes right back makes it super super easy to manage all of this all the formatting is done using the go format package which means that all go code is actually going to be formatted exactly the same way because the go team has a formatter that they ship and they say this is how you format go which I actually really like it makes the language look super clean and it means that anytime I look at go code I know what it's going to look like it's not I won't magically see eight space indents out of nowhere and be very sad and have a very very rough time dealing with that code base so that makes my life really easy so a couple other really nice little things I have in here to really make this uh setup great is I have my thunder client in here this is probably one of my favorite vs code extensions it makes it super easy to test my http requests it can save stuff in here you can get collections of requests environment variables um all that stuff I'm not very responsible with it I kind of just throw them in here and just try them and you can send this and hey look here's some congressional training data for you guys i'm um, not going to leak the api key but there it is um 
so that's, you know, that's how I do. That's how I test all my rest APIs. Cause I write rest APIs all the friggin' time. And I really like that. I don't really use Postman because while it is good and it has a lot of features, it's sort of the like uh, AWS versus railway type problem of like, yeah, they both technically do the same thing, but one has so much extra crap that I just don't care about. And I just need to do one simple thing. So I just do the one simple thing and having it built into my editor makes life so much freaking easier. So that's my little HTTP client. Another thing I have is, oh yeah, big thing is going to be my Vim emulation. I use the Vim extension in VS Code. It is just this. You search up Vim. It's Vim emulation for VS Code. Favorite extension makes life so much better. I learned this a couple of years ago, invested the time to actually get used to it, and it was the best choice I had made in development probably ever. Makes it It's just so much more pleasant to work when you're good at Vim. It takes a while to get there, but it's really not that hard, and especially especially if you don't have the extra learning curve of trying to develop in your terminal, because I, I'm not a huge fan of the NeoVim workflow, to be honest. I like I just like VS Code. It just works for me. Um, I know that's heresy, but that is what it is. But I really, really like having the Vim macros at my disposal. Makes it super easy to jump around the code. Makes it super easy to edit stuff, clean stuff up. It'll, it just makes you better. I mean, there's no other way to put it. If you can learn Vim, do it. Um, I do have a couple extra things that I actually set up to make my life even nicer. I added a few custom key bindings because one of the big things that you get with like NeoVim or something is it's super easy to jump between files and do all that stuff. You can easily bounce around and do all this crazy stuff, hands on the keyboard, not having to touch the mouse. But traditionally with VS Code, you would have to like go over here and click on one of these or you'd have to like tab around up here with your mouse. But I added another a couple more key bindings. So like I added a leader key of space. So if I hit space and then K, I'll jump over to Viper.go or I've hit space J and I'll jump back to main.go so i can easily bounce between my files like this which makes editing a lot easier and then to actually access the stuff over here within my explorer i could hit a uh, space one and that'll take me over into this directory here so i could open up docs and then hit docs.go this is all hands on the keyboard i'm not touching the mouse at all i can go in here jump around in these really nice for development but the way i typically end up doing it is i just do com uh, i just do command p I think on Windows, this is control P, but that will just open up the uh, search files by name. So if I wanted to just go in to do uh, gracefully, I wanted to get that one, just type that in, search it up, and that'll work super well. Uh, you can also execute commands for your editor in here. So I wanted to uh, go install update all tools. I used to have to do this a lot, I think, but I used to have to do this a lot because my Go extension would be bugging out. But as of late, I have never, I haven't had to do this in months, so I'm guessing that they've just kind of cleaned everything up. Really, all that matters, in my opinion, is that it works for you, that it's customized to you. This is, um, like I said, this is what works for me. All of the links, if you want them, are going to be down below. I'll try and make sure everything's in there. Let me know if I forget anything. It's, if you have any questions, let me know, and uh, that's it.